Hi guys, how's it going? It's Lisa Unger. Um, for those of you who don't know me, and I think maybe you do because you're probably watching this on my Facebook page, but I am the New York Times and internationally best-selling author of 19 novels of psychological suspense, including the most recent Confessions on the 745 and the upcoming Last Girl Ghosted coming this October. So um, as you know, I have been um, since the beginning of the pandemic doing my fun little show called Three Good Things where I've been inviting my author pals on to talk about some fun stuff, positive stuff to counteract all the negativity that we have been dealing with over the last few years, a couple years and beyond <laughs> and forever. <laughs> Today I am here with a very exciting guest, Paul Wilburn, who is an award-winning journalist and uh, author. He's also the executive director of the Palladium, and he wrote an absolutely wonderful book called Cigar City. And this is a collection of short stories, really, really beautiful short stories, very evocative, you know, rich with character, lots of local flavor for Ybor City. I don't know if you guys don't know, this is our local area. We're in um, the Tampa, St. Pete, Clearwater area. And so uh, just a really beautiful collection of short stories about this area and about like sort of the like young, exciting arts culture in the 80s. And I learned so much from this book, Paul. I really did. I, and I got such a, you know, I got such a, such a vibe from some of these stories, you know, like I picked up kind of on your nostalgia, you know, right. for that era, like the exciting, you know, feeling of being an artist living in a kind of edgy urban area and like some of the characters. And there's, of course, a lot of local places and recipes, which we're going to talk about. But Paul, welcome. Thank um, you. I'm so excited to have you here to talk about um, Cigar City and Three Good Things. Lisa, it's great to be with you. And, uh, you know, we'll hopefully see each other in person sometime I soon, but this is nice. I like your backdrop. I oh, like thank the you. living room. It's great. Thank you so much. And we also have something else kind of important in common. We are both um, judges um, for the Tampa right. Bay Business for Culture and the Arts, the Charlie Hunchell Hearts, um, Art Stars Award. And I'm the literary judge and Paul, you're the musical like, judge. Instrumental music. Instrumental yeah. musical. And so we've both been doing this for like a really long time, right? Like Five, Many years. years. I can't even remember the I first year. I think like year. six or seven years. So yeah. usually we get to see each other at least a couple of times a year for these events, but that hasn't been the case. So, we, so we've been seeing each other. We've been seeing each other virtually, although we did just see each other. Where were we? At the Mahatma. We were at the orchestra. <gasps> that was sublime, wasn't it? Florida I never orchestra. used that word, but I loved it. That word fit that concert. Sublime. It did. It did. The Florida Orchestra, we went to a private performance. Um, we were invited by Susanna Weymouth and um, who's the director of development um, at the Florida Orchestra. And it was like, Matt, it was magical. It, it was, really was. It is, it's the first live performance that I've been to in such a long time. And it was just, it was very joyful to see people and to hear music and it was directed so beautifully and yay, that's where we got to see each other in person. Yeah. Just recently. And Lisa, there was something funny that came up that night. I saw a friend of mine and she said, uh, you know, it was a formal event. You had to get dressed up. Yeah. And she said all of her friends were sending texts and things. Do you fit into that? Do you say, I don't fit into this anymore. The zipper won't go up. I can't sit down in this outfit. <laughs> well, I will say that I did have to resurrect a, a very old dress. And I was very pleased with myself that I was able to <laughs> fit into it. I was like, it fits. I don't need to buy anything new. <laughs> oh, that was funny. But it was a lovely night. I had a great time. It really was. So, um, so thanks again for being here. Do you want to tell us anything about your exciting book? Um, oh, it did one. It won the uh, Florida Book Award, the gold medal. That's gold very, medal in fiction, and I, you know, it's amazing. I had been a nonfiction writer my whole life and made my living, you know, as a yeah. journalist, yeah. and so I knew I could write, but I never really had a lot of luck at at fiction. I tried a few short stories, and so you know my biggest worry was, would this be terrible? And would people hmm. say, you know, Paul Wilborn wrote this book and it's terrible. So <laughs> I didn't know I was going to say that. <laughs> well, you never knew. <laughs> and so it was great that it, it got good reviews. People really liked it. And, uh, and then the book award was kind of the icing on the cake. Uh, yeah. And it's been a nice, it's been a nice ride. Uh, so I'm, I'm pleased. It was a two-year project and, uh, you know, it was great. I lived that. 
terrible. Yeah, exactly. You know, I, I mean, I just, can totally you know. feel that. I can totally feel that energy. And also like just your love for the area. And I think you said that your your grandparents met in Ybor City. Is that right? Great grandparents came Great from grandparents. Sicily and, and, and came, met at Ybor uh, yes. and, and, you know, rolled cigars and did that whole thing. So I had that whole side, even though I don't really seem Sicilian. I've got a good Sicilian side on my mom's side, so. Yeah, and I kind of it kind of gave me the same energy. Like my my family's also Italian. Um, you know, my grandparents came from Naples. Um, my my great grandparents came from yeah. Naples, and um, my my grandparents are both born on Mulberry Street in wow. New York. Yeah, and um, so I felt that you know I feel that same connection to that culture, and, but just you know uh, up in, up in New York. But like I was a young kid living in New York City in the eighties. You know, I went to college at NYU and went to the new school. And so I was there in the 80s and the 90s. And I remember that same, you know, just that vibe of just, you know, excitement and just. Well, if you were there, one reason I called it Cigar City was sort of a, a nod to Alphabet City. Yeah. Which in the absolutely. 80s was a similar scene, a very similar for scene. For sure, for sure. You know, I think my thing joke always was, well, you know, they had heroin and they died and we didn't and we lived. Exactly. You know, so exactly. but otherwise it was a very similar scene. And yeah. there were a lot of big name artists who were there, obviously. But in Tampa, crazy Tampa, USF had the graphic studio. Right. And some that. of the biggest artists in the world were coming for weeks and months at a time to work at Graphic Studio and going to Ebor. And so, you know, I was dating uh, the same girl James Rosenquist was dating and she left us both for a third guy. You know, it was that kind of era. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, that's the way it was. Yeah. And really what struck me as I got through the stories, uh, I, they're totally fiction. I mean, there are a few characters that are amalgams, but really mm -hmm. these characters, uh, most of them are just creations that I put right. in there. Sure. Uh, but I, what I realized I was writing about was that period in life where you're still got one foot in your parents' world yeah. and your other foot is out in the real world, but you haven't quite gotten into quite either one. It out. Yeah, exactly. And you're, yeah, you're making mistakes. You're, you know, picking the wrong people. You don't know who you are, but it's fun. And it's really a free, uh, exciting time in anybody's life. And all of these yeah. characters are in that kind of zone. And so it was fun when I, when I realized that's really where I was. Yeah, you know. I really felt that. I mean, it really kind of brought me back to that own like sort of inner space. Like I, I was living on like 11th Street and First Avenue. Oh, no kidding. You know, forever. And, you know, so it was like in the East Village for, you know, for college, but also, you know, clubbing. And, you know, you know, I was a, a, a young writer. Like I've never, I've always been a writer all my life. So I was, you know, at that time really thinking, you know, really exploring that part of myself for the first time, like in, you know, studying college and, and all that. So it really brought me back even to my space in New York City. It felt very, it felt very similar, a very similar energy. Oh, like good. Because yeah. it, it just, it, I was really loved that time in life, but it was great yeah. that I didn't have to actually go through it again. I could yeah, do it sort of I mean, vicariously. Never, like looking back on it, you can right. kind of romance it. Right. Then when you like when you're there and you're like, wow, I've got twenty dollars in my bank account, kind of yeah. feeling like that's a different. It's so much more romantic from the other. It looks much better from there. <laughs> It does. Oh. Um, so, uh, so was your, I know that you're, you know, a, a big part of your career is in journalism, as you mentioned, but was fiction always kind of your first love? Was it always? I, yeah, I was a reader. My dad yeah. was an incredible, incredible reader. Yeah. And uh, we spent a lot of time in the library. He was, he was a speed reader somehow, and he would read three, four books a week. I just watch him going through them. Yeah. And so th he devoured everything at the library. And he was, he would have been a writer, but I think he came out of World War II and ended up getting a real job. And right. a I real found job. Some, like yeah. that's what my dad was like, you need a real job. Real job. Don't he's be still, this writer. He's still waiting. Sorry, dad. That's right. Yeah, it's worked out all right. <laughs> it's but, okay. Uh, yeah, we're doing okay. <laughs> but, but yeah, so my dad became a, you know, school principal and, but he was always reading and yeah. I took up fiction at a very early age and just loved it and uh, was reading, you know, I would take some of his books to school and they were a lot of times were detective stories that mm. didn't have a lot of sex in them, but the covers were very lurid. Very sexy, and yeah. the teacher would find me with these books and go, what are you doing? You know, <laughs> call your father. No, they're his books. They're his books. 
<laughs> if you call them, if you call them, they're just going to, he's just going to take them back. That's right. You say, what are you doing with my book? <laughs> Anyway, um, so I guess that leads me to my first question, my first three good things question. So, sure. is there a book right now for you that's like a favorite, something that really maybe transported you during the pandemic, or just something that is like you know a seminal favorite, like something that you return to again and again? Well, I'm going to do one that really uh, I came to during the pandemic, mm -hmm. uh, though I knew the author beforehand, mm -hmm. and you know it's uh, the Queen's Gambit by Walter oh, Tevis. Yes. And you know, that. yes. He he's everything I want to be in a writer. I mean, he he tells great stories with yeah. incredible characters. He's, you know, female leads. He's funny, he's touching, he's, you know. Yes. And three of his books got made into movies. I mean, he's just uh, you know, just an incredible yeah. tale. And yeah. uh, I saw the I saw the, you know, the Netflix show Mm -hmm. before I read this book. I hadn't read this book. And yeah. the book just transported me. And I realized, again, what a good writer. I had read, I guess, The, the Color of Money or The Oh, Hustle. right, The Color of Money. That's right. Yes. Yeah. And back yeah. as a youth. And they were pretty racy for me as a kid because it was all about pool halls and, you know, yeah, guys and women. Course. And it was, you know, sort of a... But those, you know, he's just... He just really transported me. I've read a lot of great books during this this uh, yeah. shutdown and tried to support Tom Below, our local bookstore and others, mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. I thought it was important. Uh, but this one really stood out for me as uh, as something that's stood the test of time, I guess, too, because it was Absolutely. written in the Absolutely. Yeah, I had a similar experience. I watched the Netflix show first and it was just, I mean, it's stellar. It's an absolutely yeah, it a great stellar, show. stellar production. And then um, I had my friend Greg Hurwitz on. He's a very super talented thriller writer, and he had he he also talked about the Queen's Gambit, and he said that it was one of two books that he had read after um, watching the show or film. The other one was Winter's Bone, which is another. Wow, I know that one for sure. Yeah, stellar book. Um, the I haven't read the book. Fantastic, but the book is really excellent as well. Um, but I, so I did that, you know, he's like, read it. He's like, you're going to love it. And so I read the Queen's Gambit and I was just like, you know, it's very, the show is very true to the book, but there's just, of course, there's a deeper layer to Beth Harmon on the page mm -hmm. than, you know, than you ever really get to in, in the, in the show. Although I think they did a really excellent job. And um, I just, it was absolutely, as you say, tra transporting for sure. Yeah, and he, he has very few characters that are all bad or all good, and I right. really like that. Right. You know, the characters who you don't like end up doing something. Something, re yeah, redeeming. something even, re redemptive, yeah. Even that horrible father, you know, he was I good know. for a little while, and then he turned bad again, but I know, I you really, kind of feel like, you know, you kind of felt for him in a way, like, you know, he was just this kind of lost, he felt like right. such a lost soul, you know, D in a way. Didn't know who he was or and no. had to be something else. Uh, right. And I love the adoptive mother. I mean, I oh, think that's I a know. brilliant, brilliant I character. Know. That was be it was beautiful. That was yeah. a beautiful element. She was just so like, you know, she you could have gone so he could have gone so many different ways with her, but it was just so true and and moving and just sweet. And I I loved every I loved everything about it too. Excellent. Yeah. Book. So that's uh, that's that's I, I could name a lot more that I've really enjoyed this year, mm -hmm. uh, but but that one is uh, is the one I decided to pull on so awesome excellent well yeah so most of us who are in love with story of our love in love with story of, in any format so the other question i will move to for my three good things questions is is there anything um on television or in the movies you know something that again you know is current new that just kind of blew you away or something that you find yourself returning to again and again you know I really should name a movie my wife's been in, you of know, just course. to give her That's a little right. we credit. Can't, we can't not talk about Eugenie. Your she is on famous, the roll. gorgeous, She's a... beautiful actor wife, Eugenie. Oh, my God. She's got a big movie coming out. Uh, Conjuring 3 comes out in June, and she's got a huge, huge part in that movie. I'm so excited. You're going to like it a lot. Oh my and God. Uh, and she just did um, Fear of Rain with Harry Connick Jr. and Catherine Heigl, and she had a lead role in that. And oh my was, gosh, I'm so excited. I'm yeah, like, all, so, I'm all goosebumpy. You got to watch that. I, it's on pay-per-view. So check it out. <gasps> okay, excellent. But Definitely. The movie, now that I've done that, the ad for my wife, and she yes. will 
throw me out tonight. I'll Which just is spend very the night. necessary. Very That's right. You should have her on three good things. Like you should have made her she, come on with you. She would have been great. Yeah. She's off at a reading for something right now. So uh, anyway, uh, but the thing I go back to over and over, and as an Italian with some New York connections, you will probably know it well, but Moonstruck by John Patrick Stanley. Oh my gosh. It's yeah. the greatest movie ever made, essentially. Is, I mean, I think is. there's just no question about it. And I can watch it from anywhere in the movie at any time. Absolutely. <laughs> he, I was at the University of Michigan for on a fellowship for journalism in 98, 99, and they brought him in. And he did a whole master class about Moonstruck. <gasps> and uh, it was just magical. Just it magical. Is. It's ma it's he a wrote magical it in a weekend, topic. Lisa. He wrote it in a weekend. I hate that. <laughs> <laughs> snap out of it. <laughs> oh, I took two. Yes, yeah, snap out of it. Who died? There's so many great Italian lines in there. I know, oh my god, it's, it's so great. And you know what's even greater? I just recently watched it again with my daughter, with oh, my no daughter Osha, and she absolutely loved it we were just roaring i mean it is it's perfection it's perfection there's it not is. a bad I mean, there's moment not, in there's it. not a missed word mm -hmm. or scene or shot in that entire film it is it's perfection it truly is and you know we had this big extended italian family i so <laughs> we would go every sunday and my great grandparents lived till i was 12 so i you know and they never spoke english so right. you know we had the whole thing and all yeah. the crazy relatives and the guy Absolutely. who got, you know, who got went to jail for burning down houses for the mob, but of course he would not tell because you don't tell no. who paid you. But <laughs> so I knew a lot of those people and I knew yeah. the emotions and uh, yeah. it's just beautifully done. Yeah, so. I agree. I mean, my whole, my dad, you know, it's where, you know, my dad is Brooklyn born and raised. So Brooklyn really was like, you know, my home. <sighs> growing up and you know a lot of my family is still there my grandmother just passed away about uh two two and a half years ago uh she was a hundred she lived in um she lived in bay ridge her entire life wow. um she it, when when she died she was living in the apartment across from regina pass which is where i was baptized where my parents were married wow so like that was you know um a very big part of my my life and and growing up and still is and so moonstruck really really <laughs> speaks to that my italian grandmother who unfortunately she died about 84 and i would have loved to have had her for another 16 years or more yeah but she she was the biggest influence on my life and we traveled the she took me on trips around you know, to Italy, and we, yes. I took her to Sicily to our roots for two weeks oh, and stayed so with our great. family. But that's she was a character. I would, when I was writing columns, if I ran out of column ideas for the newspaper, I'd just go to lunch with her <laughs> and I had a column when I got home from some goofy things from that she's. Some, from something. Yeah, my grandmother was like that, Taylor. Just, I mean, it's these big spirits, you know. And it was like, and I think that like that is just that's something I think about a lot, like from my family, like all the all the women are like big personalities. Oh, yeah. You know, like my yeah. grand, you know, the men are just kind of like, okay. They were putting <laughs> like up with long, they lived long suffering, <laughs> <laughs> long suffering yeah. father and grandfather and husband and oh, great. My grandfather died early because he just couldn't take it any longer. It was <laughs> great, but his heart, he just said, I, I'm exhausted from all of this. <laughs> Oh my gosh, so funny, so funny. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh well, probably food was a big part of growing up uh, for you, and I, it was for me and my family. And I know that um, you know during the pandemic we were doing a lot of cooking and experimenting and stuff. And also, it was a big feature of uh, Cigar mm -hmm. City. You know, it's a big part of, I think, just our culture in general. And it's always, always like food always tells a story about whatever region. Um, it originates from and I know that like when we travel and stuff uh we always try to take a cooking class because I feel like it oh great us, great idea it gives us so you, it's like a such a three-dimensional way to experience a, a city so is there anything for you that's like that like something you know that you just love and that you kind of return to again and again or something new that you started cooking during the pandemic well the good thing uh, I married really well, aside from a movie star. She's from New Orleans and she's an incredible cook oh and God. she likes it. It's yeah. not, she just sort of, oh, you know, it's, like it's an art. instinctual. Yeah. 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 Uh, so I was a bachelor for a long time and I can feed myself pretty well. I got a few recipes, <laughs> but what was fun it, is when I was doing the book, I, there's one particular story set in a restaurant that was a kind of a pivotal restaurant. I changed the name, but it was 
restaurant where a lot of stuff happened for us in Ybor City. And so I wanted to talk about the food. And so we got this great book called uh, Clarita's Cucina, which is the Tampa cookbook. Clarita oh, wow. was a, a Tampa, uh, I think she was Spanish, mm -hmm. uh, but, but she, she has a tie, because Tampa is this melting pot. So there's Italian yeah. dishes, there's Cuban dishes, there's Spanish dishes in there. Mm -hmm. And it really creates that feel that I grew up with in the extended you know, Italian family, because Ebor was, you people, my grandmother spoke Spanish, Italian, and English, sort of all at the same time. <laughs> and, you know, and the food was exactly like that. Right. So we went into the book, uh, went into Clarita's book, so I could make some of the recipes that I wanted to have in the story. Right. And they ended up becoming very powerful. And I realized when I, we put a whole chicken into the pot to make her uh, eros con pollo, mm -hmm. uh, to make Clarita's eros con pollo, that the chicken has a little bruise at the, on the, or piece of it, kind of at the top that you go, it looks like somebody smacked it, you wow. know? And, and I didn't see it till <laughs> I put it in there. And, and I, so my, the cook in the story is mad. Her boyfriend has left her in Ybor City and she's wishing she had smacked him right there. She thinks the bird is sort of him and she wanted to, where she hit him with the collected poems of William Butler Yeats. <laughs> exactly. But anyway, she ends up making that dish through the story and it, it becomes a real integral part of the story and all that other incredible food that was Ybor City. So that was a lot of fun for me because we made four or five of the dishes here in our kitchen and got to enjoy them. And I got to have sort of the feel of Yeah, and it gives you that sensory, you know, experience of cooking and it adds so much to the writing. You can kind of feel that, you can feel that in the stories as well. Yeah, it really does. And it was funny, uh, I, I changed this husband and wife somewhat, but there, it was a husband and wife who ran the restaurant in Ybor. Mm -hmm. And so typical of the immigrant restaurant tours, the husband came in about 10, you know, had a cigarette, he sat by the thing and took the money you know flirted with the ladies and the wife showed up at 7 a.m cooked everything organized all the waitresses when everything was done she made sure all the dishes were clean and at about four or five she got to go home right and, and the husband had probably been playing dominoes for two hours it was an ebor city marriage yeah. <laughs> so that okay. couple in a different way is in there and i that's great uh, that's yeah, great so. well i loved it i loved cigar city and thank you so much uh, I'm sure everybody. <clears throat> a moment. <laughs> Sorry, I do. I need a moment. <sighs> Sorry, everybody. Um, loved everything about it. And tell us again about Eugenie's movies. She's uh, the movie coming out uh, early June. I think it's the fifth or the sixth or something like that. It's called The Conjuring Three, and it's uh, Patrick Wilson, Vera Farmiga. It's all these big stars, and The Conjuring mm -hmm. is a. They've made billions with this franchise of scary movies they're sort of the amityville type haunted house movies and uh and and so you know she's very bad apparently that's all i can say i can't say too much but okay, it's coming yeah. out and uh and dc comics just released a limited edition comic based on the movie and she's on the cover so comic-con here we come i hope so fantastic so yeah that's great i'm super so, excited yeah and you have a book coming out in the fall of i i do my Dark and Stormy Dawn. That's sort of the working title. We're, I've got about yeah. 20 titles and, uh, and I'm going working with my book group and other folks and my publisher to narrow it down. Uh, but it's, it's a, a novel and I lived in my, before I came to Ybor, after college, I worked for a, just a year in West Palm Beach on an afternoon newspaper. And so this novel is set in Palm Beach and West Palm Beach and the Everglades uh oh, wow. in yeah. the in the like 1981 and uh okay. so it's a lot of fun it's it's hopefully a comic novel uh and it's it's a a road picture coming of age rom-com slasher story so i think it's got a little of everything lisa a little of everything it should cover all the bases <laughs> Well, so um, thanks everybody for joining us for Three Good Things. Um, you know where to find me. If you're on my Facebook page, then that's a good place to start, but also lisaunger.com. And Paul, tell us your website. What is your... It's a, sure. Sorry. It's willbornrights.com. Willbornrights.com. So everything you wanted to know about Paul and his, his book and um, his upcoming book, check, 
check out those websites and, you know, keep tuning back in here for more episodes of Three Good Things. Paul, thank you so much for being here with me today. Lisa, it was a real treat. So good to spend time with you. It's been too long. I know. Well, we're going to do this in person like very soon. Right? Maybe we make some of these recipes. Yeah. I think that would be fun. Yes, please. That would be okay. really fun. Okay. Oh we'll my do gosh. It. Okay. Everybody stay tuned because we're definitely going <laughs> to film that if we do it. <laughs> Thanks everyone. Happy reading.